This is DJ. And this is Ish. And this is season, season six, six of, of Better, Better Let, Let Me, Me Tell You. you. You know a song of hers I really, really like? Like, I like. Well, I like several of her songs, but right. the one with Barrio Boys. It's so funny I was going to say that one. That song is good. That song is good. I like that song in Spanglish better than yeah, And it's like straight R&B. It's yeah. like, it's really, really good. Um, yeah, that's a good song. The Barrio Boys should be on, like, the next, you know, Backstreet Boys tour. The Barrio Boys? Yeah, why not? Oh, yeah, the Barrio Boys had some hits. They sure as hell did. Una vez más amarte oh, y like besar cada esquina de tu piel. Funny thing is, piel. though, Barrio Boys, Una vez más. we know them, but not from the box. No, we know them from MTV from International. MTV. Right, exactly. Wait, 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 we're recording, right? Yes, we are. Okay, we need to start. We need to start. Um, <laughs> welcome, everybody, we to are. episode 261. Yes, we are. I got it right. Yes, you did. I got it right from you, the first You were try. prepared today. I, I don't know prepared is along the right way. Prepared for the, the number. The right word, I <laughs> for mean. the number. But I actually remember, because I remember last week was an even number, 260. Okay. So, uh, by default, 261. Yes, 261. Yeah. So, welcome, welcome, everybody, to episode 261 of Pero yes. Let Me Tell You. Yes, 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 yes. The yes. weekend is finally here. Woo-hoo. I had a long ass week. You did, and I was there for one of those days. Yes. And you were there for half of today. And yo di 500, 1500 vuelta. That's so dizzying. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of spin. That's more spinning around than Kylie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm spinning around. Yes, it was more like I'm driving around. But um, okay, so you know what? The other day, I, I it was on the long day on Tuesday. Um, uh, you, Tuesday we, shit, you and I yeah. were talking about something that I thought was really funny. Like after, after, like I got to home and I dropped you off and whatever. I actually started thinking about it. <laughs> so this is really funny, listeners. So. I don't know. We made a reference to that song. I drove all night. Oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. to get to you. Yes, and you, you said something about Celine Dion and Cindy Lauper. Well, I was like, oh, you're feeling like Celine, Cindy, and Roy, or something like right, that. Yeah. Right, all three people who sing the song. And what I was saying was, and listeners, I don't know if this <laughs> happens to you. So, in the early 2000s, Celine Dion yep. redid that song. I drove all night, but when she redid it, I thought. Oh, she redid Cindy Lauper's song. Right. I drove from, all night, from the 80s, right? which is from the late eighties. But I remember when <laughs> Cindy Lauper redid the song. We were just kids. I remember thinking, "Oh, she redid Roy Orbison's song." But you can't make the leap. But I don't think of Celine Dion redoing Roy, Roy Orbison's, Orbison's song. song right. right. So I think of Celine to um, Celine Cindy to Cindy. Lauper and Cindy to Roy, yeah. but not. Celine to Roy like it's like Celine Dion didn't sing his song it's probably also because Roy Orbison never did Divas Live oh that's true he was <laughs> well and Cindy Lauper did yeah she did one of the ones as like a special guest like I think okay. she did the year of Sharon Tina Turner. I remember I remember the Divas Live that was like Men Strike Back it's like okay this is not Divas Live anymore yeah like, it's not it's not <laughs> so I mean why did we leave that whole thing but Bring back the divas live. Back, let's 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 talk more about the barrio. What are the barrio boys doing nowadays? I have no clue. <laughs> they probably did like a reunion tour recently or something. I would imagine yeah. just because yeah. you know nostalgia and, and all that. It, it works. I, I would like to think the barrio boys were like ahead of their time. In what way? Well, because they were doing like R and B. You know, they were Latin. They were very much Latin. Well, I mean the name, uh, the barrio boys. Um, right, but it's something that they really. It was very much part of their shtick and their right, personality right, right. and their look. Um, and their music was like really, really good. And I feel that like they were big in the early nineties, mm-hmm. which also was like the era of New Jack Swing, which True. could be a little Latin adjacent in a way. Yeah, um, it was like it was almost like an offshoot of freestyle for some reason. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I you know, I, I think that. They were doing the whole Latin thing before it was, it a was thing. A, the thing to do. Right, that's true. <laughs> so, and and again, it was very much part of their personality. And they sang they sang in English and in Spanish. That's true. So that's true. Yeah, they were back in the day. Like, if they were to come out today, they would be like the the CNCO mm-hmm. of today, which bothers me because it's like just call them cinco, right? Like literally, that's the point. 
Although right. I, I, I don't know, I don't know now, much. Now I don't know much about them. them other than they were basically making the band on Univision, right? With yeah. who, Ricky Martin, este, Alejandro Sanz, and Laura Pausini. I don't know why I remember that. I love that Laura Pausini is Italian, but has such an impact in Spanish language music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love every time Laura Pausini comes on on TV. My parents are like, "A mí me encanta cómo ella canta." <laughs> But Laura Pausini doesn't hold a candle next to La Pantoja, La Pantoja as we well, established well, a few I mean, weeks ago. But I'm but I'm seeing a pattern, you know, La Pantoja, Pausini. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, your parents are very big fans of PA people. They don't like Paulina Rubio. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's a, but maybe it's got to be only in the last actually, name. It's got to be the last it's name. It's funny you name. say that. My dad does like Paulina Rubio a lot, actually, and he thinks that she is a much better singer than Dalia. And I'm like, oh. first of all. That's a house divided. I it is a house divided, but I sort of like that you have an opinion on this. That's like, true. You really have an opinion on this. Um, and second of all, you're wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> and honestly, look, it's it, for personal reasons. You know, look, the, my two interactions with Talia, Talia groped me. She did, and I saw it, people. And she thanked me for complimenting her hair. She at, did at a, at a much later event. She didn't have that much interaction with me. No, she just no. I you know we were so years ago when Dalia released her English language uh, album. Yep. We went to the signing and we were we were actually really excited. Well, as we should be, we were really excited. And she did grope you because you she were did. wearing a shirt that says "Squeeze Me." And um, this was before the Me Too movement. <laughs> well, no, in her defense, in in Dalia's defense, because I don't want this to turn oh, into a oh, thing. Yes, okay, yes. you know. She read my shirt. Uh-huh. She said, squeeze me. And I said, you want to? And she said, okay. So right. I gave her permission. You, you gave consent. I did give consent. You gave consent. This is, this is true. So yes. then I I was next. And I was just like, Talia, uh, Talia can you sign my my album? Like in the you know album booklet, CD booklet, in picture number four. And she's like, oh, that's my favorite picture. And I'm like, okay, thanks. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas, you know, Paulina Rubio promised surprises at Pride and there were none. There were no surprises. None. But anyway, <laughs> that's a good song by Radiohead. No surprises. Anyway, <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask you because... Only we can transition from Paulina to Radiohead. We've, we've talked about several times here on the show about the Barbie movie. Yes, which I saw this I week. am going to be a hater. I am totally over this shit. Like, it's time to move on. Yes, I am that person. A lot of you right now are rolling your eyes. Yes, I am over this Barbie nonsense. I was over it when they were, like, having the... Like, two months ago. No, two years ago when they were filming it. And I, we would say, like, I've never seen a movie that's being filmed right. that has so many leaked photos, right? Right. Professionally um, leaked photos. I mean, for God's sake, this past weekend, I was at the beach. At the beach, right? And this barge passes by with a huge Barbie sign. Hey, you got to do outdoor advertising in in the environment that it, that you're that you're working with. I mean, okay? look, I'm giving it a little bit of hate. At the end of the day, it, I mean, I know it brings people joy. And if you're happy, it. go for it. Okay. So because you saw it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what is really the movie about? Is there a message? Um, so ultimately, it is a girl power female empowerment message Mm -hmm. right like that's the ultimate thing about this is you know it's the because it takes place the whole thing is that they it starts off with them in barbie land and and is it actual day like present day yes it's it's present day but like so they live in barbie land um all the barbies live in barbie land with the kens and and then they know that they are dolls so in barbie land all the men are kens Mm -hmm. right and all the women are barbie okay so it's like a Nicki Minaj fan. It's, All Barbies. Yes, yes. It's a Nicki Minaj fan, uh, fanfic come true. So they know they're dolls. They know that they are played with. They, they, they know that they are made by Mattel. So they are cognizant of what they are. They exist in Barbie land. Now, the, the main Barbie, Margot Robbie, starts to have like existential type thoughts. And so she goes to see the weird Barbie, which is played by Kate McKinnon, which is basically a doll. Which, oh, by the way, all this is narrated by Helen Mirren. Mm-hmm. Um, is a doll that like her owner like you know cut her hair and painted on her face and whatever. So what happens is she has to go into the real world into Los Angeles and find the the girl who's playing with her, the person who's playing with her that is affecting her change of personality. So she so her and Ken go through this rift into the real world and it's all very hyper realized, super cute, campy, you know, over the top like like it knows what it is. And they come into the real world, and so obviously going from Barbie land, where Barbie, you know, it's it's a female-driven society. Mm-hmm. So she comes here, and from the get, you know, she's wearing her Barbie ensembles, and she's like, oh, you know, I don't know, I, I feel like, you know, I, I feel some danger the way men look at me or whatever. And then Ken 
being in, the, in our world starts to realize like men are in power here, whereas they're not in Barbie land and mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. So through a series of circumstances, Ken goes back while Barbie stays in the real world for a little bit. By the time she goes back with America Ferreira and her daughter, Ken has turned Barbie land into a patriarchy, quote unquote, like mm-hmm. a Ken. They call it the Kendom. And, oh, so Ken's quite the asshole. Yeah, Ken is, but it's but it but what I find fascinating about it is so you know through a whole series of events, then eventually it comes back. They they take back you know Barbie Land for Barbies and whatever. What I think is funny to me, or what I think is interesting, is that all these people are saying this is an anti man movie. It is not an anti man movie so much as it is a pro pro girl power movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, two things can be true at once, but I don't see, see it that way. But there is a scene where literally where Barbie comes back and she's telling Ken how like, no, this has always been run by, you know, the Barbies, the, by the women and da, da, da. And he basically looks at her and he's like, yeah, and you never respected me. And how does that feel? So what they've essentially done is they flipped the script because think about it. It's always been Barbie and Ken. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's always the female first in, in, mm-hmm. that, in that world of that toy. And so. They're, what I, how I'm interpreting it is that basically men, these, well, these quote unquote men, don't like seeing themselves painted as the traditionally female role, which mm-hmm. is second, you know, secondary so, to, right. sub, you know, subclass or, or what have you. And so I'm like, well, right. No te molestaba hasta que no te pisen el gallo. Right. And so that's where it's all coming from, quite frankly, because they're like, well, no, that's anti. No, it's not. You've just been placed in the role that is traditionally the woman's role in society Mm. and you don't like it. Mm. Did he ever go to her? Well, Bobby, we're just getting started. No, because they're not Danish. (laughs) Okay. I love you, Ken. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. He's American and she's Australian, so they're not they're not Danish. No, no. Wait. In real life, in real life. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wait, Barbie's Australian. No, 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 like, no, no. Margot Robbie, Margot Robbie, Margot Robbie. So, do at any time do they cross universe with like Andy's toys? No, because that's Disney and not Warner Brothers. Oh, that would have been a, a good one. Yeah, the synergy no va tanto. Wait, isn't Barbie in Toy Story? She was in Toy Story, but they they got permission to use her in Toy Story. Okay, but she's not a Disney property. No, I know she's not right. a Disney property. So so wait 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 hold on. Because remember, Barbie's owned by Mattel, so Mattel can, right, can right, right. license wait, it. Wait wait wait, but but so Barbie and Andy's toys from Toy Story are in the same universe. In the Toy Story universe, yes. Again, well, I don't know how I don't know how this I don't know. Look, I don't want to start talking about the Toy Story Barbie multiverse, right? Because then that's just a whole other IP that is probably going to happen in the next three years. Of course, it is. Once Disney merges with Warner, you know, Max and Discovery, I don't know at this point why not. Right. Um, that would be interesting to see Disney Max. <laughs> I mean, okay, so you so, so so you liked the movie? I really liked the movie. I really liked the movie. I went with my sister and. It was just, it was campy. It was fun. You know, the the Barbie world, the what they and I see it on the screen. What Greta Gerwig, the director, had said she was inspired by like the old um, Hollywood musicals, mm-hmm. where the sets were just obviously fake and big. And you're and you're all of you're that. the Barbie to my uh, Oppenheimer. <laughs> oh, I totally want to go see Oppenheimer. <laughs> I know. Oh no no, I totally want to go see Oppenheimer. The problem with me and Oppenheimer is that I about two or three weeks ago concluded like. A four, five, four or five week podcast series on the atomic bomb. Mm-hmm. So after like you know five and a half hours of the atomic bomb, I need a little bit of a of a buffer mm. before I go see it. Okay, <laughs> you need to be a, a little bit of atomic I a, bomb. I, I need a little Barbie. Okay. Before so you give you give, you give the Barbie a thumbs up. Absolutely, yeah, wholeheartedly. It was fun. I had my little Ken you know, shirt. Yeah, you know, I've always hated Barbie. I really have. <laughs> Why? Barbie has always annoyed me. I know people come at me, come at me, <laughs> DM us at pero let me podcast at gmail.com. <laughs> I always did, and I used to do terrible things to my cousin's Barbies. Uh, they just annoyed me. Like, she annoys me. <laughs> I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I, I, again, I come at me, people. Okay, I, but it, so it's it's not from like a, you know, I political annoy- blah, blah. No, blah, blah. no, okay, no okay, it just okay, annoys okay, me. Okay, okay. Ugh. Okay. That's like I really, really hated when like little girls were into Cabbage Patch Kids. Oh my god, I gotta feed my Cabbage Patch Kid. It's not real. Like it's not real. You know, you get invested in like the relationships of TV characters, so don't talk to about about not real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but but you know, you know the only thing of Barbie I really liked because you know I've always been into architecture. Yes. 
And from a little kid, you know, kid, I would like, I would build these things. Like the Barbie dream house, the one that was like really tall that came in three pieces. That had like the triangle in the middle. Yes. Yeah, that was like the I remember uh, thinking, late 70s, early 80s. I remember yeah. thinking, Arctic, 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 architecturally, this is like on point. Yeah. I was like, this is really good. And it had an elevator, right? They all have an elevator. Yeah, I was thinking like, as a kid, I would be like, I would totally do this different. I would paint it. <laughs> I would get rid of the pink roof, obviously, and do all this type of stuff. But I'm like, this is sound. We could make a house out yes, of this. Yes. I would love to go to Mattel and just see all of the, the dream houses through the years. Yeah, I'm sorry to my cousins. I, I owe you a lifetime in Barbies. I put one in the microwave. So basically, you created Kate McKinnon. She's the one who... She's the weird one. So she's the one that, like, they burn her hair, that she's oh, painted yeah. on oh, or whatever. Totally, so, yeah, so you created Kate totally, McKinnon. Totally, totally. Yeah. And looking back on it now, like, I was totally wrong because I was, like, destroying their toys. <laughs> like, yeah. They should have busted up your shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, they should have literally just melted your Legos. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Turnabout's fair yeah, play. Because she used to annoy me so much. Like, so much. Like, look, I never hated... There were other girl toys. And it's not even that it was a girl toy. It's just that Barbie annoyed me. Like, I didn't hate My Little Pony. <laughs> I, I didn't hate uh, Rainbow Bright. Oh, I have a story with Rainbow Bright. In all Bright. fairness, those didn't have the same cultural magnitude. I didn't hate those, you know... I may have watched My Little Pony cartoons. <laughs> it was on TV. <laughs> Listen, back then we only had four channels. Right. But Barbie was just, oh, my God. And then when Barbie and the Rockers came out, I was like, I, oh, God. <laughs> oh, I'm raining on everybody's parade, aren't I? You really I are. I really am that you day. You really are. But you know what I do love? What? I do love the song. With, by Dua? By Aqua. Oh. By Dua. No, no, no. I don't like any of the songs from the... You don't Not like even the, Dua Lipa's, no. You don't like the Dua Lipa song? No. It's so fun. No. But I do like Barbie Girl. Well, yes, but that's because we like Aqua. Yeah, we do like Aqua. We do. <laughs> Both albums. I'm a blonde bimbo girl in a fantasy world. You know what? I, I think we said this a few weeks ago on the podcast. M my kid knows that song. Even before the whole Barbie of it all mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. It's incredible to me that that song has remained somewhat relevant for 25 years. Because well, you... you it, it, look, Aqua... Because, you know, you and I both like Britpop and international music. Right. We know that Aqua had like a really long career in yeah, Europe It, was, it and wasn't just Barbie Girl, right. But here in the United States, they were for all intents and purposes a one-hit wonder. One wonder. Yeah. And it's interesting that that song, which is really a parody, right? But again, I think it speaks to just the longevity of the Barbie brand. It, because it's intrinsically tied together. Look, one of the first things that when this movie was releasing a soundtrack that everybody was asking or talking about is like, oh, is it going to be on the soundtrack? Right. You know what I mean? So it just came back. And it back is and it isn't? It, it, they sample it for, I think, the Nicki Minaj. I think Nicki Minaj has a song on it with that that person who named herself inappropriately. Who? Ice Spice. Oh. Oh, yeah. You don't give yourself a Spice name. Yeah. <laughs> Top of the Pops does that. Right. And they're no longer around, so you right. don't get a Spice name. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? As I said, I, I don't care for it. It annoys me. But, you know, people are having fun. So let the people Listen, have their fun. It's the highest grossing uh, female directed movie. It's let people have their It's not the Hurt Locker. No, that was the most critically acclaimed. <laughs> but this is the highest grossing. Um, yeah. Anyway, so let people have their fun. Yes. I and know again, I'm in the minority again, of this. I, it I also, want to I read think the case study of the marketing. It also has to do with the fact that I loathe the color pink. So there we have a problem. Well, yeah, she's inherently all about pink. Yeah. yeah. So that's just off, like, like out the gate. Like pink gives me a rash. Like, like, <laughs> which is ironically pink. Right. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about the person that I mean. My color when I when I'm stepping out in color, it's like oh, navy blue. You stepped out. Yeah, he does not embrace color, ladies and gentlemen. I don't. I don't. At but all. every now and then, I'll surprise you with like I don't know, uh, no beige. I mean, let's move right along. That just made me sad. Let's <laughs> like, move. You think beige right is along. a surprise? Let's move right along. <laughs> Oye, qué tú me dice this week? Um, well, for those of you who don't know, this week the House Oversight Committee had a whole set of hearings on UFOs. Yes, they did. Did and you hear about this? About did, time. Did you read about it? I only saw headlines. I didn't read the story. Okay, so I mean, I didn't sit down and, and, and watch it. Um, I did read upon it a little bit. And basically, um, you know, the Oversight Committee was asking a lot of questions about to three or four ex-military officials mm -hmm. who were talking about their knowledge or what they had seen or heard of um, in terms of... Um, 
either UFOs or un- unidentified right. objects. It, it's you, it's I, I, U, U, UAPs yeah, or something unaf- like that. Unaf- un- unidentified. Um, it, it's it's aerial a, projections. Yeah, or there's something. A, there's a P in um, there somewhere. Yeah. But basically, one of them said that there was evidence of non-human remains. Well, that could be a dog. Fair enough. It could be a whale. <laughs> it could be a bird. <laughs> You're just going to keep raining on parades today, aren't you? I'm, listen, I'm raining on the Barbie parade. <laughs> and now and the I'm UFO raining parade. on the UFOs. I am. It's a, I had a long week, people. I had a long week. <laughs> I had a really long week. I did. I had 500, mi 500 vueltas. Um, and you know how many vueltas that is? That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. The fact that's that he's not just still twirling like a top. <laughs> yeah, it says a lot. It says a lot. <laughs> anyway, um, so basically, they they said that they found evidence of this. Now, a lot of the there was one person in particular that a lot of his testimony was hearsay. It's like he didn't see it. He heard it from other people. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but, you know, regardless, they both were saying that they are sure that the United States has uh, more information on UFOs and mm-hmm. alien life or non-human life, as right. they explained. Um, and that it's it's a sure thing. Absolutely. So I, I'm a little bit surprised that this did not get... It got attention, but I thought it would be like a bigger deal. A bigger deal. Yeah, I don't know how to gauge that. Um, I mean, I've always thought. I mean, I've always thought about there being other life forms or aliens, if we want to call them, from an agnostic point of view. Like, if they're around, sure, and if they're not, sure. Like, I think it makes sense that if the universe is endless and there's billions of other um, uh, different type of constellations and solar systems and different planetary Mm -hmm. systems, why wouldn't there be life? It's it's a little like arrogant to think we're in. But but even just from a logical perspective, like why wouldn't there be life somewhere else? Mm -hmm. But again, if there is, there is. And if there isn't, there isn't. I mean, what are we going to (laughs) do? I mean, I think if there is, they should come. They should make themselves known. Look. I'll tell you where I'm not going. Here's Roswell? I'm not going to L.A. to stand on the helicopter pad of the U.S. Bank building. Oh, yeah, no. Because that did not end mm-hmm. well. No, it didn't. I am not going there. The, you know what? That is something that we're very lucky on. D- those type of disasters don't happen in Miami. Um, I mean, okay, so they don't. But I think there's a Hugh Jackman movie where one did. There is? Yeah, but nobody saw it, so I guess it doesn't count. It doesn't count. No, it doesn't count. No. no. No, almost doesn't count. No, <laughs> is that a song by Brandy? Okay. <laughs> After you said it, I'm like, yes, I'm hearing the melody. Um, yeah, like those big disasters, disaster movies don't happen. In, Which is ironic because we're a peninsula. I mean, even deep, deep impact, it happened. I think in, in the West Coast as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but maybe they just didn't show it. I remember like, mm, deep. Well, I remember deep impact really well. But it's uh, Tara. What's her name? Leone. Uh, Taya Leone. Uh, being there when the waves were coming and she's hugging her dad. She's like, "Oh, daddy." <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I ever saw that movie. <laughs> I actually like that movie a lot. That was the year of the dueling uh, asteroid movies, right? That in Armageddon. Uh, Armageddon. Yeah. 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 Armageddon was a good movie. I liked Armageddon. Yeah, it was good. You know, it was it was fun. We miss movies like that. We do. I miss a big budget movie that's not an IP. Wow, that is something coming from you. I'm the first one to tell you that I'm over IP. I am. That is really, really something coming from you. I'm the first one to tell you that I'm over all the franchises and the sequels, and I have superhero fatigue. And if I've got superhero fatigue, yeah. then you must be. Can you imagine how I feel? Yeah, you must be like <laughs> wrung out. <laughs> I was. You were done. Uh, yeah. Like yeah, I, I get it. And I and I, I've always told you. I think I think I'm a good person to gauge with that because. I've never been into comic books, but I've been into movies. And okay. I used to enjoy those movies. They were fun, you know, and I think they were good enough. Obviously, if you're a fanboy, you enjoy them. And right. if you're not a fanboy, like I remember when I first saw the first Iron Man, I was like, oh my God, this movie's amazing. Well, Blade. The, even, yeah, Blade. Blade, but, I think it's a better example because I think by the time Iron Man came on, the expectation was the MCU was around the corner. Right. But like, I think Blade is a better oh, example in, in that a it's just a great movie. Blade, I have to tell you that the opening scene of Blade is one of like the best opening scenes of any movie. I agree. When the blood starts coming out of the sprinklers, a that couple, is a couple badass. years back. Well, a couple years back when I was at uh, the New York Comic Con, 
it was the anniversary. No, it's like yeah. the anniversary of that movie, and they were like, you know, oh, we're they were advertising that you know they were selling tickets to like you know uh, a party where they were gonna like you know it's gonna be very like the opening scenes of Blade I or whatever. Do it. And I was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, no, no, I'm no, thank you. It. That didn't end well for anybody. They're not, not even Tracy it. Lords. No. So you know what? No, 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 no not doing no. it. That's how they get you. They're all like, oh, it's a party, yeah. and then you show up, and the next thing you know, there's like cow's blood. On, yeah, on no, you and, no, no, that doesn't no. end well. We're good. But I used to enjoy those movies just from a casual movie watcher. Um, I, I used to enjoy them, and and I'm not into any of the none of that. I'm not into DC. I'm not into Marvel. I'm into none of that. Right. But the movies were fun. They were yeah. fun, and I think they were good for both camps. They were good for the people who di- who weren't into it like me, and then good for the fanboys. But then it's like that's all it is now. Yeah, it's like, just all franchises. It's like okay. Yeah. Well, Disney said that they're going to start cutting back on uh, Marvel and Star Wars content right because that, they realized they just started diluting everything well that's what what i what yeah. i've said I and mean, i love star wars like i wouldn't consider myself like a hardcore star wars fan but i do love star wars i have my several box sets yes, you do. i i you know i enjoy it and there came a point that when the movies would come out i'm like Meh. if i go see it i'll go see it if, if not, not i'll yeah. catch it later like mm, yeah. mm, whatever you know again for me the big one was like uh, the the solo movie I still haven't seen it. Why? Yeah. Because I don't care how Han Solo got the Millennium Falcon. You know that me neither do I. And I, I love Star care. Wars, and I love the character of Han Solo. I don't care. And I'm sure that if I were to see it, I would enjoy it. But I was like, this didn't pique my interest. That's like they're doing a Willy Wonka prequel. On how Willy Wonka became Willy Wonka? Mm-hmm. You're kidding me. Nope. Um, Timothy Sham- Sh- Chalamet yeah. is playing. Okay, I can totally playing see Wonka. him playing Wonka. Is playing Wonka, and uh, Hugh Grant is playing the original Oompa Loompa. Clearly through CGI special really, effects. Really, that's the it. casting. That's the cast that they've shown so far. Again, do, do I do, think they? Does anybody really care how Willy Wonka got to be Willy I Wonka? I think they should have casted someone else, but I'm not going to say it on air. Okay, but because I'm not. No, I don't. And Who I was asking for and this. I love Willy Wonka. Yes, I love the original. Yeah. I would say that the original, if it's in my top 25 movies of yeah. all time, I love everything about the original. Yeah, and. I've never sat here and been like, you know, I wonder how Wonka ended up with that yes. factory. How did he raise that collateral? <laughs> like, what is it going to be a movie I about mean, they, formulas? He explains to you how he got the Oompa Loompas. And I don't, but and again, who cares? Like, I just don't care. You know what I mean? It's Augustus like, come back. It's, <laughs> okay, who's your favorite one? I mean, mine is Veruca Salt. I'm very basic. I mean, Veruca Salt should be a national treasure. Like, She thinks so. <laughs> I want a party. I do. Children in laughter. Ten thousand pounds of ice cream. I I don't know if he's my favorite, but I can relate. Tell me it's Mike. No, but I can relate to Augustus. Oh, with the chocolate. Yeah, I could see that happen. Like me getting so excited that like I fall in and then right. you know, and then you I go to the furnace. It. You go to the well, but the furnace was you know turned on every other day. So you had a 50-50 chance. Okay, that's fair. Like, yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll use that to comfort myself as I'm in the tube. <laughs> you know what's funny? That I, I again, Willy Wonka is one of my favorite movies. Mm-hmm. I saw that movie for the first time when I was like 20 years old. Really? Like, yeah. I'm Cuban. I didn't grow up watching Willy I'm Wonka. I'm Cuban. I, yeah, I no, no, no. It. It's different. <laughs> my parents didn't. We barely had cable. Like, where was I going to see Willy Wonka? No, but I, mean, I feel I Willy didn't Wonka, see it at school. But I feel Willy Wonka was on like ABC. When I feel like that was one of those movies that was probably on like um, over air, you know, free TV. When remember, remember that on Sun? No, remember on Sundays, you know, the the big three used to have like the Sunday movie. Listen, I remember when I was a kid, my parents had been here less than ten years. I call those the training years. Oh, that's right. <laughs> right? That's right. <laughs> That's my parents right. didn't know what Willy Wonka was. Like, how the hell was I going to watch Willy Wonka? That's true. They we did barely not know had, ABC from we, NBC. We barely had cable television unless w- Willy Wonka was dubbed in Spanish and they were going to put it on Univision and it cannot ventire. I wasn't watching Willy Wonka. So you would have had to watch Guillermo Wonka? <laughs> Guillermo Wonka. <laughs> y su factoria y su de chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> I mean, you want pure imagination. Uh, so when, when when was I gonna watch? Willy Wonka? That's true. So that's, that's why true. when I was like, there's a lot I discovered. So you were catching up. I, it was. Yeah. I always say this story all the time. I, you know, my parents go on and on on how they never were able to listen to the Beatles in Cuba because right. the Cu- the Beatles specifically were forbidden by the communist government. Blah 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 blah. 
I did not grow up on any music of the Beatles. I did not. I mean, I knew who the Beatles were, right, of course. but I didn't know any of their songs. I didn't know any Beatle references. None. Like to me, Michael Jackson sang "Say Say Say" with some guy. <laughs> in, the, in the in the olden days, yes. <laughs> say 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 na na na. No, th- th- he sung it with some guy, but Latoya was in the video, right? Latoya, oh, that Latoya, video, you knew. Latoya, I knew, but Latoya, the guy he knew. sang it with, not a clue. Who's not Paul a clue. McCartney? Who's right. Paul McCartney. It wasn't until I was in high school that the ABC aired the Beatles anthology that I actually watched all of it. I was like. Oh, okay. And then obviously by watching the Beatles anthology, because the Beatles songs are what they are, I was like, okay, I know that song. Right. Okay, I know right, this song. Right, right. Okay, I've heard this song It put before. context. Right. It's like, okay, either from a commercial or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, my parents were in the training years. When was I going to watch Willy Wonka? <laughs> like <laughs> Training years. <laughs> but it's true. Oh, it's just funny. The training years. That's... <laughs> That's why I say I say that there's certain things that happened in my childhood that I still don't understand how they happened. Like when I was like the summer camp, the summer camp, <laughs> when I was seven or eight years old, my parents sent me to summer camp and thinking about it now, my I'm like, my parents didn't even know what summer camp is, let alone leave me alone at a summer camp. Right. But somehow they did. Now, it was a summer camp by my elementary school. Right. But, right, you know, right. It, wasn't like it wasn't a sleepaway camp. No, no. no right. Oh, right. Oh, 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 right. Oh, oh, I know. I'm I, think clar- my par- I think my parents wouldn't let me do that now. I'm like- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I were to tell my parents that I was going away to some camp by myself... <laughs> To sleep there, they'd be like, ¿Y por qué? Pero tú estás loco. Tú tienes una cama de lo más buena en la casa. ¿Y para qué tú quieres hacer eso? ¿Qué cosa es? Like, that's true. <laughs> but anyway, back, back to Willy Wonka. That's for Willy Wonka and the UFO. Okay. <laughs> so we're getting a Willy Wonka prequel. We are getting a Willy Wonka prequel. Again, who asked for this? No one. So we're, wait, if it's a prequel, we're not going to have the song. <laughs> well, pure well, imagination. Maybe we'll get a prequel song. <laughs> I love I love the memes about the the memes about Willy Wonka about the grandpa that it's like oh, oh yeah, yeah he yeah, was yeah. sitting in bed for years not working but the moment that Willy Wonka uh-huh. told him he had the golden ticket he got up and uh, danced. Se yeah se enderezó se enderezó del tiro que va yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ajá y dejó los otros tres viejos en la cama yeah. <laughs> Que se jodan. Y la pobre mujer, his mom, limpiando, haciendo the laundry. Yeah. You know? Why didn't she go with him? <laughs> right. Cheer up, Charlie. Oh, I guess she had to keep working. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pero el viejo, <laughs> el viejo era un vago. He was probably doing Medicare fraud. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so funny that Willy Wonka was shot in like Salzburg, Austria. Like, oh, it was? No, I, th- I thought it was the UK. I thought it was a soundstage in the UK. Well, have you seen the aerial footage of, of where oh, they're at? True. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I, it couldn't be any more Bavarian. I, I, sorry, I, okay, I was thinking of the sets. Like that's why. I, well, I maybe in well, you yeah, know, right? Because the 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 room where they start floating is so British, <laughs> right? <laughs> the the room where they try that gum that has a million flavors that says Cool Britannia to me. <laughs> maybe that's where they eat fish and chips. I don't, I don't know. know. Uh, <laughs> I Veruca Salt. <laughs> Maybe Graham Norton was a candy in the factory that came to I life. I love, I love. There's a part of Willy Wonka. I mean, if you don't like Willy Wonka, you just fast forward this part of today's yeah, show. At least another five I minutes. love the part where <laughs> Veruca just goes to her dad and she's like, "You're always getting in my way," <laughs> and she's probably right. <laughs> She was great. She was. That great. was one of the biggest disappointments about the remake. That Veruca Salt wasn't as amplified as she was in the original. Meanwhile, you totally know that Veruca Salt nowadays is an influencer. Oh, totally. Yeah, totally. She's on TikTok and she's already on Threads. So yeah, she's she, she's a strong woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she. I, I mean, if you come to think about it, she was right. Oh, she, she knew what she amb- wanted. She was ambitious. Yes, yeah, she was. She would do whatever she needed to do to get that golden ticket. Mm-hmm. Once she got that golden ticket, she stood out from the other ones. Yeah, <laughs> she was not going to shrink back. <laughs> no, 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 no. The other one may have been Violet, but she was not going to shrink. <laughs> No. You know that she would have squeezed Violet for the juice if she had to. Squeeze her? She would have put her in some type of contraption to continually get the juice okay, out of her. Okay, let's move along because we're... Yes. 
Uh, All this would be in the sequel, not the prequel. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to the see that I would pay for to watch. Like how they What de- happened to the kids after like they were how, th- how they after they were thrown out of the factory? Okay, why don't we do this? That's a much better story. I feel like that's just that's like a half hour show. No, but like get creative. Like they all team up to then go and like I don't know, kidnap oh. Charlie <laughs> or no, kidnap Willy Wonka. No, because Charlie gets the factory at the end. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Right? Yeah, but I don't think they want the factory. They just want revenge. Right. And the factory. Okay. For fine. the lifetime chocolate. Okay. Uh, Augustus definitely wants a lifetime <laughs> of chocolate. I mean, Augustus was a poor. Okay, we need to move on because we spent too much time on <laughs> Willy Wonka. <laughs> Oye, mi gente. As you know, we are partnering with the Florida Dairy Farmers to bring you information with regard to dairy, the benefits, how there's maybe some myths out there that people keep just putting out there for no good reason. And you know what? To help us dispel some of that today with regard to lactose intolerance, we've got Tony Castillo back with us. He is a sports and performance dietitian. Thanks for coming back and joining us again, Tony. Ish, thanks for having me on again, man. It's an absolute pleasure. Well, listen, there's a reason you're back. We had a good time as well on our end, all right? <laughs> clearly, clearly. So back to the ventanita. Back to the ventanita. <laughs> but you know, speaking of la ventanita, you, you hear all the time, oh, I'm lactose intolerant, I'm lactose intolerant. It's, it, it's almost like just a catchphrase for some people, right? But what does that really mean? Like, like break it down for us. What is lactose intolerance at its most basic form? Well, I wanted to take it to this as an analogy. Okay. I want you to imagine Abuelita comes with her chancleta because you just did something All right, bad. now I'm scared. Thank you for putting the yeah. fear of God of, uh, into me, you know, two seconds into our chat. Thanks. Mijito, dime, and you know, she's going to be upset. She's going to throw that chancleta at you if you do it wrong. So uh, Abuelita with the chancleta is the lactase enzyme in our gut. And when that chancleta hits you, you are the lactose. So it helps break you down so that you can be digested. Okay? (laughs) (laughs) This is the best metaphor analogy I've ever heard in my life. I'm loving this. So Abuelita throws that chancleta. Now, if Abuelita does not have chancletas to throw at you and she has nothing to throw at you, that can cause you to keep running amok in, in your house or wherever that may be. And that's what happens when someone actually has a lactose intolerance because abuelita doesn't have the chancleta to throw at you so your gut doesn't have that enzyme to break it down so that you can actually digest it so what happens is that there's a lot of lactose free milks lactose free cheese even a lot of cheeses yogurts are actually low in lactose meaning that abuelita doesn't need many many chancletas to throw at you she may only need one and she has just enough in her gut to make sure she can digest it but lactose intolerance is really just not having that enzyme to break it down or not having enough chancletas to throw at you to really break down that lactose so that you can actually digest it so you don't wake up the next day with any issues so so wait you just said something that i that i caught on it's almost like not all not all dairy has the same lactose levels, right? So there are actually some dairy products that are probably friendly or, or much more easy to digest for those who do genuinely suffer from lactose intolerance. Would that be accurate? Absolutely. You can go to any grocery store and they most likely will have a lactose-free milk. And it's actually sweeter. So if you're looking to cut back on a little sugar, uh, pregúntale la ventanita if they have a lactose-free milk to put in that café con leche. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I appreciate that effort, but I don't know if those señoras are going to understand si tienen, si tienen la leche que es lactose-free. I mean, that's that's going to be a challenge. Hey, we got to try. That's you know? going to be a challenge. But the good news is you can order the café by itself, take it home, and use those lactose-free you know, milk to create your own café con leche at home. Absolutely. So you have those lactose-free milks that are, are made in grocery stores and given to you. You can also get uh, cheeses. So those hardened cheeses typically are lower in lactose. Really? So un quesito actually really good for you to eat if you have some sort of actual lactose intolerance and not many people do because a lot of people confuse it with an allergy but it's not an outright allergy it just means you don't have that enzyme to break it down you don't have those chancletas so cheese yogurts are definitely some of the ones that you can stick to if you do feel like you have an intolerance but always trying to go for a lactose free milk if you feel like you have that intolerance cool so you so yogurts which i know is very good for your digestive system those tend to be okay yes. if you are absolutely. are suffering from some type of lactose intolerance absolutely yes and you want to stay away from those alternatives for many reasons one leche tiene proteína we want those muscles even abuelita needs muscles i need muscles you need muscles you know what I'm talking how about how else it? is abuela gonna throw the chancleta if she's got weak muscles <laughs> it is vital for abuela to have it strong muscles yes and the señorita la ventana so you got to have those eight grams of protein, which is how much you get in a cup of milk, whether it's lactose free or not, versus one gram of protein, which is in one of those alternatives. And one thing I, I want to mention as well with these lactose free options, they're also very high in calcium. Oh, good. You need about 
seven cups of broccoli to get the same as one cup of leche, which I know no one here wants to eat seven cups of broccoli to just get that one serving yeah, no. of leche like, in regards to calcium. I like broccoli, but there's a limit to how much I'm going to eat in one sitting. I mean, that's a lot of broccoli, man. <laughs> that's a lot. So if you are lactose intolerant, there's cheese, yogurts, lactose-free milks, a lot of those options that we can get that are very easily and will sit well in our stomach. That's awesome. You know, and again, look, listeners, as, as we said last time, you know, there's so many options out there that I think we are not even familiar with. But you know what? That's why the Florida dairy farmers are here to help. You can visit floridamilk.com or lechedeflorida.com, you know, so you can share with Las Señoras at La Ventanita and find all these mm. options. And, and again, I don't think they, they might not have a uh, example as, as relatable as the chancleta, as you just <laughs> shared with us, Tony. But, you know, it's always good to know that the information is out there and that, you know, there's a ways to still enjoy dairy even if you you do have some degree of lactose intolerance. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much, Ish. I appreciate Dude, you. Thank you again for stopping by. Yeah, man. Keep those chancletas thrown. <laughs> <laughs> Sprinkles? Check. Hot fudge? Check. Ooh, cherries? Check. Chocolate and vanilla ice cream? Check, check. Chico, what list are you making? That's everything I need to celebrate National Ice Cream Month. Ah, verdad. July is when we celebrate all the yummy, cold, dairy goodness that is ice cream. Yeah, and I'm planning on making Tremendo Sunday using ice cream made from real Florida milk. Don't forget, we can also use ice cream to make milkshakes too. Even make a piña colada shake. Put some coconut ice cream in there and... Ooh, que rico. Okay, okay. Well, if you want to find other fun recipes for enjoying ice cream this July, just head to floridamilk.com or leche de florida com today okay but here's the real question are you gonna share that sunday maybe <laughs> i don't okay. think gene wilder spent this much time okay. on willy wonka okay what do you have so i um I don't. man i don't think there's any podcast this month that's talking as much about willy, about willy wonka, wonka unless there's an official willy wonka podcast and even then they probably they probably only do half an hour. Yeah, you know, at most. Um, no, I wanted to just bring up. Um, I, I don't think we talked about it. Um, the Twitter rebrand. I don't think we talked about this last week, did we? Oh the, no! Well, it happened this week. Okay, that's why I couldn't. I couldn't remember again. The, it's been a whirlwind week. Yeah. So now it's going to be X. So instead of tweeting, we're Xing. Yeah, actually, that is what it's going to be called. Oh that's God. what that's what uh, Musk has said. It, it's it's going to be. I will say this. <coughs> Excuse me. I find it fascinating that he's doing it because there are there are estimates. And I was actually just looking this up before we started. There are estimates that by wiping out the name, he's going to get rid of anywhere between four to twenty billion in brand value. That took what is it, fifteen years to Twitter was around to to build up. Right. And some people are saying that he's doing it because he wants to just officially kind of like erase the Twitter past, you know, like this is a new company and get rid of the baggage that, that it may have had when he came on board and blah, 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 blah. But he's still just doing scorched earth, petulant brat right. bullshit. I mean, at the end of the day, now I will say, considering the amount of porn on Twitter, X is appropriate. But I just, I, I, I sometimes wonder like what's in his head? Like what is he thinking? Because his ad share is down 50% from last year or since he took over and it hasn't recuperated. So now he thinks that like, oh, let me just rebuild this thing. Nobody's going to go around saying, oh, are you Xing? Yeah. Tweeting has brand value, has recognition. Right. Like, it, it's people use it as a verb. You know, it, I, I, what do you, I don't know. What do you think? It's uh, Well, I mean, here's the thing. I, I've said this a million like I've times. Tried my head I have it. no love for Twitter. Right. Um, so it could, it could disappear off the face of the earth for all I mm -hmm. care. I think Twitter. I mean, obviously, like anything, it, it has its good and its bad. I think Twitter has been more detrimental than good. Mm -hmm. um, I think that once upon a time, maybe it was beneficial. And I certainly do think there's still certain uh, benefits to Twitter or, or it is a, a platform that you can use if you use it responsibly. Right. can be of value and of you right. know a, provide something positive. But on the most part, I... I would be very happy to see Twitter go. I, I don't like it. I've never liked it. I think it brings out the worst in people. Um, as I said a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about threads, if you want to watch porn, there are sites to watch porn. There There's other avenues to, to do it. I just think that Twitter, and I said this a couple of weeks ago, it's trying to be too many things mm -hmm. for too many people. Well, they said that they want to turn it, again, they want to turn X into a place for audio, video, payments, banking, um, like to make it like a one-stop shop of everything. And I'm like, listen, 
I never say never, right? But I don't think I'm going to be banking with Elon Musk. Well, but but even even aside from that, I mean, look, Twitter before I'm Elon just not gonna Musk. Do, I'm just not going to do my banking before with Elon media Musk. Tw- Twitter was already controversial. The what Elon Musk brought to Twitter is just it made it an even bigger dump, dumpster fire. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just extremely unstable now um oh yeah what is, uh, do we have a blue check mark do we not have a blue check mark right. um do you have to pay for it do you not have to pay for it okay we're changing names okay is this going to be allowed or is this not going to be allowed right. right so you can't talk about certain things on twitter but there's porn for everyone right, right. so again it, it, it's sort of like it's juxtaposed, you know, mm-hmm. it, you can't do and say this, but you can show this. Mm-hmm. So I, I just have a hard time seeing how so many different contradictions can live in one platform. And I, if it, it ceases to exist tomorrow, I'll be like good riddance. Bring back MySpace. Bring back Tom, if you're listening. I've told you, I I, I think, Please and, come and, back. and I, I'm, I'm going to say it here on the podcast, and this okay. may age me, this may, you may call me an older millennial or a zillennial or what is <laughs> whatever. it, whatever, a, a zillennial, zillennial yeah. whatever it is that we're, we are, yeah. I think MySpace has been the greatest social media platform Ever because mm-hmm. MySpace, yes, of course, probably technologically, um, uh, we're leaps and bounds, yeah. you know, past that in terms of, of of what it was. But for its time, I think that MySpace it it, it, it was a place of joy. It was a place to um, share your pictures, share your, your life, share music. I loved the fact that you can customize your page, that you could have music. Again, I said it here. We were all coders. Yes. We didn't know it. Like, I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Um, I remember, do you remember, I remember mine when you would log into mine for years, it was like the, the background picture was Yankee Stadium. Mm-hmm. And I remember that for, for a really long time, my song was The Way I Are by Timbaland. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> But I loved MySpace. And then, you know, but when Facebook started, became popular, ahí ya, cuando poquito a poquito se empezó a joder la cosa. And then Facebook, you know, then people started, I don't know. I just, MySpace was so much fun. It really was. I think that it really defined what social media should be, which is to share, to you know, enjoy have a community. to have a community, to look at other people, to find other people, to find interests. I, that is what I loved about MySpace. And to me, Facebook was never as good. Instagram, I like Instagram and it's the main social media platform that I use. But, you know, the thing about Instagram also oh, is that oh, down. Fell. Um, the thing about Instagram also is that. Instagram became sort of a vanity place. Like, how many right. followers do I Especially have? Especially once the influencing Right. In. How many followers do yeah. I have? How many likes am I getting? Yeah. How many, you know, forwards or sharing am I getting? It's now about numbers. Right. Whereas... And I think a lot of it has to do with its time. MySpace existed in a time where influencers were not a thing. Absolutely. Right? Whereas now it's all about influencers. And the thing with me is, and I've said this several times, anybody who considers himself an influencer and that is what they do, that to me is a turnoff. Like it makes me... It's like I'm moving right along. I'm moving right along. I don't follow people because they're pretty. I don't follow people because Mm -hmm. they have, you know, they, a lot of people follow them because I think that on, on Instagram, especially you see somebody that has a lot of followers and you follow them. It's like, no, I don't, but right. But a lot of people do. It's like, I'm not going to follow you. It's like, who the hell are you? Like, I don't don't care. I, I, pretty, pretty, but that doesn't mean you're interesting. Right. And I see that so much that people just follow someone because they're they're hot. And it's like, really? Like, you're going to go through the, the, this person's pictures every day because you think just they're hot? Like, yeah, that has a shelf life. Yeah. And then and then there's so many people. There's so many people Vying doing that. it yeah. that it's like, OK, so as I, I always quote the Incredibles. Right. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Right. When everybody thinks they're special. Then nobody is special, right? I, I, I'm, I'm you're paraphrasing, paraphrasing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, in the in the movie, when you know, obviously, the Incredibles were special. Right. You know, if everybody thinks they have those powers, then is their yeah. power really special? Yeah, and and now it's just it's just so 
it's so fabricated, it's so curated, it's so fake, and I see right through it. So I'm not impressed by anyone mm-hmm. at all th- right. that that does that. And again, bring back MySpace. Everybody's, you know, Tom was everybody's friend. You know, the biggest controversy in MySpace was who was going to be in your top eight. That's true. Which I have to say that nowadays I'd be like, oh no, who's going to be in my top eight? Like, okay, I I better be one of them. Well, yeah, but you know what I mean. Okay. Like, like okay. there comes a it's like, okay, well, there's more than eight people that I'm like very very close right. to. Right? Maybe you could do like you know how we have a rotational flavor for Bean Bump Boyle. You could have rotation. You could have a rotational okay. like the last two slots. You know, right? Oh, but. Oh, I guess. Right, okay, but that's still six people that are non-rotational. I have, like, 25 people that I'm, like, really, really close to that... Well, then you're just going to have to have some type of Hunger Games competition. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever, so do you. A big-ass cornucopia. So do you. (laughs) Yeah, but I would just pick and I don't care. (laughs) I would. Yeah. Yeah. You would. You would. And honestly, a part of it would also be like, you know, okay, but who works aesthetically with the theme of Absolutely. my... Absolutely. There you go. You know what? In that case, you probably would not make it in my top eight because I know I will not like your profile picture. <laughs> because you have a problem with me showing my chest. It's not... <laughs> it's not that. It's you just are, that... You are all about body shaming me. It's just that I like my grid on Instagram and everything to be like a certain aesthetic to... Everything has to be centered or using the thirds. The I use the rule of thirds a lot. I don't use math to post things. In, <laughs> please tell me you know what the rule of thirds is. I do is. know what the rule of thirds is. Okay. I use the rule of thirds a lot when I post pictures on Instagram. And, you know, I have my own theme. I have Darian's blue theme. Yes. It's a hashtag as well. That's all blue. Yes. Like, so then you come there with, like, your pictures all over the place. Yes. And it's like... Because my pictures... For some, you know, for somebody who's complaining about a lot of curation, you sure do a lot of it. No, but it, yes and no. <laughs> it, you know what I mean. I'm oh, curating, <laughs> right? I, but I just like for I don't like there to be chaos on the grid. <laughs> that's the thing. That's a t-shirt. That's, I don't like to be. I don't like there to be chaos on the grid. When I go to an Instagram page and there's like a meme and like a picture and like a repost and I'm like. Oh my God, this grid is not uniform. It's not like clean. It's It, it gives me a little no, bit of anxiety. Bring on the chaos. It gives me a little bit of anxiety. Bring or like people that post a blurry picture. There's a sharpen tool in your... <laughs> but sometimes Instagram. a blurry... Okay, it depends. If you're purposely posting a blurry picture, that's different. Right, but there's people who think the, it's okay to post a blurry picture. It is. They're okay. not being provocative. Embrace it. Embrace I mean, it. for that, in that case, you know, bring back classmates. <laughs> that was a waste of time. <laughs> Why? Because you had to like request, and then you had to sign. You could only like, I think, see like two people, and then you had to sign up for a subscription. And it was just, it was not worth it. Well, but, I like, mean, if we're really gonna go old school, then bring back AOL Instant Messenger. And Napster. Do you remember it. all your screen names? I remember all my screen names on AOL Instant Messenger. It was the same as my my email uh, for, at Hotmail. I jail twenty six. Yeah, I jail twenty six. Yeah. So I was Frank at FIU. <laughs> yes. You were Neo. I was Neo. Uh, I was Neo. Uh, twenty fifteen. I'm going to change the numbers. Okay. Uh, I was Neo 2015, right? Okay. But definitely Neo okay. from when I was obsessed with the Matrix. Yes. I was Jetta Guy 78. <laughs> When I had a Jetta, <laughs> I had forgotten about Jetta that guy. One. Jetta yes. guy seventy eight. You had a Darien one, like a, right. Like, well, like my real D- email, DJ my real like email that, yeah. is dborch yeah, yeah, That's right. I've yeah. had that email longer than a lot of you have been alive. Yeah. Um, but my my other email was Frank at FIU. Now my name is not Frank, but if you know, you know. If you know, you know, and this <laughs> podcast is not long enough to n- say so, why. So transitioning and speaking, people who you know who 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 are uh, no strangers to controversy and and I believe different names. Um, Sinead O'Connor passed away this week. Y- yes, and I am giving her my last soda. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, then, well, I all mean, right. we could talk about her, but I mean, all right. No, I was going to talk about her actually in the context of of the social media that we've been talking about right now, really, okay. because you know, even though she was around for it, I feel like she wasn't. You know, yeah, she was of a certain age, so she didn't kind of come up with it. And I just started thinking the other day, actually. You know, for those of you who don't know, Sinead O'Connor was was a singer. Um, nothing compares to you. 
it was her biggest hit. And she is infamous for, for being on SNL and ripping up a, a yeah, picture just, of the Pope. Just talk about my everything about my last soda. Oh, okay. Go well, ahead. you know, nope, nope. Then we'll, we'll stop. We will table this and we'll come back to the last soda. Sure. We'll come back to the last soda. But, uh, go ahead. Never mind. Switch topics. Okay, so um, it's official. <laughs> this is what happens because you and I don't talk about right, it, right? It's official. It's official, people. You know how this year you're like, hi, I tremendo calor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's official. July has been the hottest month ever recorded in like the <laughs> world in like <laughs> recording human of history. history. Yeah, right. July. So <laughs> well, I tremendo calor. There was a somebody in the UN said that we're no longer in global warming. We're in global boiling. Oh, I didn't know that was a thing that could happen. <laughs> oh, I didn't know we could graduate or escalate to boiling from warming. Well then, <laughs> but here we are. But here we are. Somebody was saying that going to the beach is like going to on a, in a hot tub. Now I wouldn't say that. That's a little dramatic. No, I would say it's more like being put on a baking rack, mm. especially if you're lying on the on the sand. Yeah. No, but I mean, how, how was the beach? Because I know you were there. So I was on the beach week. this last weekend, and I usually so when I go to the beach, I have my you know everybody does beach differently, right? So I. I will go into the water for like two hours. Like I will be in the water for yeah, like two same. hours. Yeah, same. I love being in the water. And then I'll be in the sand for like two more hours, right? right? We got to dry. I know. I did a lot of back and forth. Oh, really? So yeah, I did a lot to. of like, okay, I need to, I'm in the sand. Okay, I am literally melting. Yeah. I need to go in the water. <laughs> well, the water's not much cooler, but you know, you know what but does. But it's wet. <laughs> but it is wet. You know what does stay cool? <laughs> Okay. The, your your Yeti, my Yeti people. This is not a. We are not sponsored no, we're by not Yeti. Paid by, by the sponsor. I just want to show you people something. This is a Yeti. If you put ice in this, it will not melt. I it just it won't. Like I sometimes have like four days ice here from like four days because I, I I drink a lot of water from here during mm-hmm. like I take it to the office. So sometimes like on a Friday, you know whatever is left over of water and ice. You know, I don't use it as much in the weekends. Right, 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 right. Um, like on Sunday, I shake it. I'm like, there's still ice from Friday. Like, how is this possible? But it's not refrigerated. So people, this is not sponsored by Yeti. If you want something to like not like melt, get a Yeti. However, but I was going to say the converse. There, there is actually something you need to be very aware <laughs> of with the Yeti, especially if you go to the beach. The same way that the Yeti can keep something cold, it could keep something hot. So this is made out of metal, right? It has insulation inside, but it is made out of metal. If you keep this shit outside, this thing will turn into like lava and it will boil your water. (laughs) So you just, you got to make sure that when you keep, you know, you have your Yeti at the beach or, you know, a day at a park, you keep it in a nice dark place in a bag in something. And then you'll keep the ice forever because if not, you're going to get soup. Yes. I learned the hard way. The the, the Yeti is like the Hannah Montana of liquid containers. Oh, yeah. It's the best of both worlds. It's the best of both worlds. But Ogonio, what technology does a Yeti have? Like, I feel that a Yeti, you need to have like a life-size Yeti here in Miami for hurricane season. Oh. You put all that shit in there and that thing is good for like a week. If you put dry ice inside a Yeti, like let's say you have a big container. Container, okay, like a, like a cooler, like a cooler, which right. they do sell right, on right. Yeti, and you put dried dried ice in there. I'm sure it will last like a decade. Like that thing is not gonna melt. Like, <laughs> wow, a decade. Oh yeah, but you've seen it. No, I have firsthand. First you've hand. seen it. First that thing does not melt. I'm like, what? Like witchcraft technology does this it's have that witchcraft. it doesn't melt? What? It's proof of the UFOs having come to Earth. Oh, you think so? That's proof. That's where we got the technology. Oh, you, yeah. Yes, clearly. No, yeah. so I mean, I think that if they make a bunker out of Yeti, <laughs> I think we'll be okay. So we should make a bunker out of Yeti. Yeah. Do okay. you know what? Like, I find really Put interesting. underground. So it's cool. Have you heard about the seed bunker? Okay. I forget if it's in Sweden, Finland, or Denmark, or Norway. It's in a Scandinavian okay, country. Okay, I was going to say, a country with lots of blondes. It's, it's in a Scandinavian country, like really up north. There is this bunker. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't know how many feet underground. It's a bunker that it they have there saved, I don't know how many thousands, if not millions of different like types of seeds. Like all the plant life. Yes. 
and it's stored there. So yeah. that in the event of like a catastrophic event, we, we can... have la, la semilla. Have... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, I hope they saved the mango. And I walk out there. Yeah, you don't want a world without mangoes. No, I don't know. <laughs> or citrus. I, but I hope they got rid of the ones that drop the sap on your car. I mean, at Mamoncillo, I could live without. <laughs> yeah. I mean, give or take. Mamoncillo. Hey, Mamoncillo. You know what's a great word in Spanish? Other than Mamoncillo? Toronja. <laughs> oh, I don't like grapefruit. You don't like grapefruit? No oh, grapefruit is so refreshing. No me gusta la toronja. No me refresca para nada. You know what's so funny? What? I go through phases where I drink a lot of that, the ruby red. Oh. I'm always like, yeah, I'm having my uh, juice de toronja. <laughs> For some reason, I like saying toronja. It's a fun word. Voy a tomar toronja con torreja. <laughs> Take that tongue twister. That's when you're having an alliterative breakfast. <laughs> sí. Quiero llenar las torreja con un vaso de toronja. Or they could be torrejas de toronja. Oh, torrejas are supposed to be sweet. Well, but they could be like zested with some grapefruit. Like, you know how you zest with like lemon and, and curd? Uh, no, not a, no. I'll have la torreja con un jugo de toronja. Jugo de toronja. And then the lady in the back, Mirta, the oh, waitress, yeah. is going to go to the back and be like, Tu sabes, cojo de nan. <laughs> un plato de torreja con un jugo de toronja. Con lo agrio que es la, tor la toronja. I, okay, but you don't like it? I don't like I don't like grapefruit. I so don't good. like. And again, you know, I, I, I will eat almost anything. I love so that. I don't like I love it. that toronja is not the same as naranja agria. Well, no. Just like a pony's not a horse. <laughs> I can tell you had a long week because you are on. Such you a long are week. on. The 500, 500 vueltas. Yes. Like today, when I got home, I was like, I went here and I went here and I went here and I went here. Oh, yeah, I have to have my tire replaced. And oh, yeah. then I went here and here and here. But now I still have to go here. Yeah. And then now we have to make, make bean sauces. Oil sauces. Yes, because this weekend we're going to be at Unseen Creatures and then Exit 1. Yes. So if you're in the Miami area, actually, no, seriously, people. Yeah. If you're in the Miami area, make sure to check us out. Um at Unseen Creatures this week. This will be yeah. the last time we're at Unseen Creatures. Yes, Don't yes. worry, Bean Pampoyo's not going anywhere, no. but Unseen Creatures are changing directions with their food and you know they're gonna have another uh, another, another uh, well they're they're gonna start their own kitchen. Correct, so correct. they're not gonna do pop ups anymore. Um but um we're gonna have our last pop up this weekend. So if you're in the Miami area, make sure to come by. Um Unseen Creatures is a great place. You get to hang out. It's yeah. a, like a great, great um uh, brew house so it's just a uh, good hang yeah it is it yeah. is so uh come check us out and if you're a little bit more down south in um in florida city yes go to the exit one tap room. which in exit one not gonna lie it's a little hot so the yeti <laughs> will be making an appearance <laughs> our unofficial co-star for today's episode is the yeti i think we should just have a room the size of a yeti we freeze that shit and then we do our pop-ups from there and then we're good i'm gonna write them an email you, you I'm so. gonna write them an email. It'll probably be it's an as, activation. It'll probably be as expensive as a house. Okay, you know that Yeti thing is like sixty bucks. That little thermos. Yeah, I know. No. So that's gonna. Be Have like, you seen how much the coolers are? Easily hundred dollars. Hundred. They're like three four hundred dollars for a nevera. For a nevera, but it's American made. Okay, well then, you know. support the union label so, and all that. Anyway, bueno, all right. it's uh, it's, this was an interesting yes, show. This was yes. one of those shows. Yeah, it was definitely one, one of those episodes of those. Yes, that yes. it's like we just keep going and going. So listeners. Yes. Thank you for yeah for for, for making for the it ride. this far Thanks for, for the making ride. this far. Um, so, okay, so it's soda time. Yeah, so I'm gonna let you lead. So as <laughs> as um we saw, uh, I'm actually giving my last soda to Sinead O'Connor. Now, truth be told, I was not a fan. I actually do not like nothing compares to you. Uh, yes, I'm being tremendo contrarian in this episode. I like the Prince it's version better. It is what it is. But but. She is, as you know, and this has nothing to do with her talent or, or that. Right, right, right. Uh, I just, her, I never really got into her music. However, however, um, you know, she is notoriously known for the Saturday Night Live incident. And for those of you who don't know, um, when she was still riding the success of Nothing Compares to You in the early 90s, because 
for those of you who don't remember who, or were not around, that song and that video were a massive, Huge. massive hit. Huge. It was one of those songs that like was everywhere, went to number one, sold a gazillion copies, and like swept every award show. Um, it was that song did that. And, um, you know, sort of still riding that wave of popularity, she appeared on Saturday Night Live and she, uh, at the end of the song that she wrote, which was a a Bob Marley song called War, when she finished singing that song, she looked into the camera and she uh, took out a picture of the Pope. She tore it up on live television and said, fight the real enemy. Right. And... um, the reason that she did that is because at that time, this was, again, 1992, there had been some little, like, speculations here and there and things that were coming out about the Vatican, mm-hmm. um, knowing about, you know, the abuse of children uh, at the hands of, of the of the Catholic Church or of priests within the Catholic Church. And the, um, you know, the, the Vatican wasn't doing anything about it. Right. Uh, they were sweeping it under the rug, uh, rug. So she did that in protest. And... You know, for all intents and purposes, she pretty much lost her career yeah, in terms of her, her, commercial yeah. success after that. Uh, she was uh, completely blacklisted. She was uh, disinvited. Well, she was blacklisted. They did the whole thing, the planadora, where they got her CDs and her records and the, oh, yeah. like um, one of those, uh, what do you call it? What do you say? Steamroller. Steam Steamroller over her music. Like she was persona non grata. But the reason I bring her bring that up and the reason I gave her a last soda is because she was right. Yeah. And she had the courage to go against the one of the greatest institutions, most powerful Global. institutions in like human history. Mm-hmm. And she spoke out at, spoke out at a time where you did not speak out against that. Right. And she did. And she was right because at that time you didn't have these scandals with different priests and different churches and all that, right. uh, that you hear about now that, Oh, you know, uh, 2000 in Baltimore, 2000 children were abused in the span of 30 years or whatever. Right. We've talked about it here in the podcast. That was not something that was talked about or even investigated in the early nineties. And she again had the courage to do that. And I think that time proved that she was right so i think that that's one of those things that you know times change right. public perception changes if she would have done that today it would have been a completely different consequence yeah, yeah. Um, was... than if she would did it 30 31 years ago um she would probably still even have a career she would have she'll be seen as a hero yeah right she would be seen as a hero yeah. i mean the anti-defamation league which is a pretty like um liberal uh organization like completely blacklisted her after that and called her out. Right. right? So, and that was back then. And that's a pretty progressive organization. So, you know, it takes a certain amount of courage and personality to do that. So I give her my last soda for that Mm -hmm. because, you know, this woman had the courage to go against this monster of an institution you know, at a very big price, and she called it out. So yeah, because she was only one song into her career. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, well, at least commercially. Commercially, that's what I mean. Yes, yes, yes. Commercially. So yes, 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 my yes. last soda goes to Sinead O'Connor. Very well deserved. So my last soda is going to uh, the actor Nestor Carbonell. Uh, some of you may know him. He was on Lost, Suddenly Susan, Bates Motel. He is a uh, Cuban American. Both of his parents are Cuban. His mother came here on uh, as a Peter Pan. Mm-hmm. But I'm giving it to him specifically because he was recently on the podcast uh, Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Rosenbaum is also an actor. He played Lex Luthor in Smallville. I love his show. And they started, you know, they started talking in the interview and. Again, nothing against Michael Rosenbaum. He's from Indiana. But he started asking him questions like, you know, well, wait, but like your parents are like from Cuba, right? And like, but like, because they left, like, because like there was like something happening with the government. Like the way he was asking the questions was very, Oblivious. was very like, I heard something once about the thing. And, you know, Nestor really took this, you know, he, he stepped up to the plate, right? And he said, you know, he's like, yes, this is because this is what was happening. And so my mother had to get on her flight, you know, by herself. And he really kind of walked Michael through the the whole, you know, the revolution, the exile and all of that. And he did it in such a way that 
in that moment, I felt like he was speaking on behalf of what we do here, right? Like uh, what we what we've been doing so much, and especially in the last couple of years, where he's just like, okay, I'm just gonna have to, you know, he didn't take the route of like, but you don't know or blah blah. He just kind of said, no, here's what happened, and kind of took him step by step. And as I was going through, you know, Rosenbaum was asking and saying things like, you know, like, oh wow, that's crazy, or oh, and 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 it just kind of reminded me again what you and I have said on this podcast several times over which is it's just shocking to us how many people just don't understand you're constantly it, schooling them in in in, in, or in the weeds the details of it right and how we just kind of have to keep banging that drum and raising that voice and you know so Nestor N N Nestor Carbonell you know did it and so I wanted to just give him that last soda for that also I would love to have him on the show um he he's actually really smart he went to Harvard his father was a lawyer for Pepsi and lived in London abroad I mean he's he's somebody who I find I've always found interesting but um I the last soda is really just because he he took that learning moment and ran with it and ran with it in a way that was very articulate and he didn't go off on like an emotional element of it he just kept it kind of down the middle so right. so yeah good that's a good one yeah we as we say here and we've said in 260 episodes uh, with the cuba matter we always have to constantly be schooling people because just when you think that people are informed and enlightened and all that you realize that many of them aren't and they have no clue what's going on in cuba and like they make all these statements that are just inaccurate and untrue. So, yep. yeah, good one. Anyway, everybody, well, we hope you listened, laughed, and learned. And if you made it this far, you know, thank you for joining <laughs> us in this episode. This was not sponsored by Yeti at nor, all, at nor all. Willy Wonka's estate. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but if they want to send us Wonka bars or Yetis, I'm I not mean, gonna say I'm no. Good. I'm not gonna I'm say good. no. I'm good with that. Yeah, you could make un chocolate caliente from. Uh, the Wonka, the Wonka bar. bars and put it in your Yeti, and then just put the Yeti on the front on the front stoop. Yeah, and just, in the hot itself. Florida sun. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> anyway, everybody, hope we hope you listened, laughed, and learned. And as always, remember to grab your croqueta, your pastelito, and your cafe. And thank you so much for joining us. Have a great weekend, everybody. Queen Stay say. cool. Yes, Queen say. see you at the pop ups. But let me tell you, is co-hosted by Darian Borges and Ismaeliano, produced by Ismaeliano. And our theme, Pero Let Me Tell You Freestyle, is composed by Michael Angelo Lomlaplex, the official gay guy. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. <laughs>